welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to explore the world of Linux directories and learn about their functions. So let's dive right in. Linux, being a powerful and versatile operating system, organizes its files and directories in a specific structure. Understanding these directories is crucial for any Linux user or administrator. Let's begin. Our first stop is the root directory. This is the home directory for the root user. It contains important system configuration files and personal settings specific to the root user. Next up, we have the home directory. This is where regular users store their personal files and configuration. Each user typically has a subdirectory within slash home, providing a dedicated space for their data. Moving on, we have the etc directory. This directory stores system file configuration files. Here, you'll find various settings for services, network configurations, user authentication, and more. It's a critical directory for system administrators. Now let's take a look at the var directory. It stands for variable and holds file that can change in size or content over time. Slash var includes log files under slash log that track system events. There are spool files in slash var slash spool for print queues and temporary files under slash var slash tmp. Another important directory is slash temp. It serves as a temporary storage location for files. It's accessible to all users often used for storing data that is only needed temporarily. The contents of temp are typically cleared upon system reboot. Let's move on to slash bin. These directories contain essential binary executable files. Slash bin holds important system commands available to all users. Similarly, there is slash sbin. sbin contains executables primarily used for system administration tasks. So these are available for root user or sudo. Now we will explore the slash user directory. It contains user related programs and data. Within slash user, you'll find directories like user slash bin for user binaries, user slash lib for libraries, and user slash share for shared data. Moving on, we have the slash lib directory. It houses essential system libraries required by executables in bin and sbin. And let's not forget the opt directory. So it is used for optional or third party software installations. Software packages or applications installed in opt are often self-contained and separate from the rest of the system. And we can't skip the boot directory. It contains files necessary for the system boot process. Here you'll find the Linux kernel, the initial RAM disk and bootloader configuration files like Grub. Now let's explore two important directories, slash dev and slash proc. The slash dev directory provides access to device files representing various hardware devices attached to the system, such as hard drives, USB devices, and printers. On the other hand, slash proc is a virtual file system that provides information about running processes and system configuration. Lastly, we have the sys directory. Similar to proc, sys is a virtual file system that exposes information about the system's hardware devices, drivers, and kernel modules. It provides a way to interact with and monitor the system's hardware components. And then moving on to mount. Mount is used by system administrators to manually mount a file system. And then slash media, which is mount point for removable media. So when you connect removable media such as USB disk, SD card, or DVD, it automatically is created under the slash media directory. And there you have it. We covered some of the most important Linux directories and their functions. Understanding these directories is key to navigating and managing a Linux system effectively. I hope you found this video helpful and that it helps you on your Linux journey. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, happy exploring. Peace.